a lot of time studying, testing, and watching my lures. I've learned a lot of things, especially fishing while cruising. Woo! Get on board, Sadie! And it's a shark or something. We think this might be the biggest fish we've ever caught. Holy F, it's huge! Oh my God! The tuna! Big, big, big tuna! You want to talk adventure? That's adventure. Oh yeah! Been hauling in the mahi, the tuna, the yellowfin, 200 pounds on a halyard. Double headers, triple strikes. It's just perfect for eating. I think I need to go to bed now. Stay tuned to the end of this video. I'm gonna go over a detail how to make your own setup. There's also links in the description down below of where you can pick this stuff up. Oh hey, we're just off the south coast of Fiji. Uh, it's blown about uh, 15 to 20 knots and we're surfing down these waves. Man, it's, it's awesome out here today. It's gorgeous, we're just running this code zero. Yeah, so we're going pretty quick and a lot of you guys have asked me about my fishing setup because to be honest, fishing on a sailboat is a lot different than sport fishing on a motorboat. Trolling while sailing presents very different challenges. It's often never perfect conditions. You're often in big seas or big swell. Sometimes it's really windy, sometimes you're short crew members. And because it's different, we need to adapt. And we need to have different setups as sailors. The one thing to remember is we fish for substance. We want to get that fish on the dinner table. We want to get on the dinner table as fast as possible and we want to fill our freezers with the rest because we don't know when the next fry spell is going to be. We're not out here to fish for like game. Don't get me wrong, sport fishing is awesome. We fish for fun as well, but there's different requirements when you're sailing. Right now we're actually going about uh, eight knots down some of these waves, so we're actually going to switch over from these reels, which I have out behind me, and switch to a hand line. The hand lines are something that have a few advantages. First, they're low maintenance, like there's no moving parts. So that's a huge advantage out sailing because everything corrodes and rusts. Second, they're easily handled by one person. You don't need a second person to slow the boat down. You don't need a second person to drop sails. Third, they provide a really low angle of entry. And by that, I mean the angle of entry for the fishing line is down here instead of up here like a fishing rod. That makes a big difference when you're going fast because the lure won't skip out of the water, it's just going to get pulled horizontally. Remember, we can't control our speed often, we're trying to make miles, we're trying to get to a place, so with a hand line, you're able to still continue to catch fish um, without having to put out miles and miles and miles of line in order to not get that lure to skip completely out of the water. So you can be charging down big monster waves and still have a lure in the water. And fourth, the fourth advantage is that you don't need to drop your sails when you've got a fish on. There's no drag, there's no reel, there's no screaming reel. That fish is simply on a bungee. You keep making your miles, you get into port in daylight. Let's review how to make an actual hand line. Okay, so the hand lines I build are uh, pretty easy. They start off with a piece of rope. This is just a, a piece of rope I bought from a spear fishing store that they use for spear guns. Um, but you can use anything like a parachute cord, which is super strong, but uh, has some flex in it. Second off, we have a piece of bungee. Um, these, this is again from a spear fishing store, super thick. So I start off with tying a bunch of half hitches around the bungee um, on one end. This attached to the boat, say the bottom of a stanchion, maybe a cleat. Uh, give it a couple wraps and then clip it on with the carabiner. I follow this along with the rope and once I get to the other end I add a bunch of extra rope so that there's some stretch in it and I tie half hitches on here again. The one thing you have to keep in mind with all this is you want no single points of failure so everything has to be strong. There's nothing here that is lightweight tackle. These are super strong swivels. This is 300 pound monofilament. The bungee could be a failure point, but it has the rope going from one end, tied on one end with a big loop of slack and then tied to the other end as one continuous line. And the 300 pound test again is 
to not allow for any weak spots in the system. Business end of things, I have a, a lure. For example, here I have a plug with a steel J hook. And the reason, there's a reason I use steel J hooks is because they will bend out. If you have a big marlin on or something, you don't want that anyways. So the hook will bend out, the marlin will get off. You can bend it back, put a new hook on, whatever you want. But that way it eliminates uh, hooking up with those big fish. Usually I use something with a bit of action, say a plug, maybe a jet head if we're going super fast. Yeah, that's the basics of it. Super easy, super low maintenance, easy to use. And yeah, let's go, let's go catch some fish. <laughs> so I just wanted to quickly review my setup and some of the other details uh, that I have surrounding a headline. You're going to need a few things. You're going to need a lure. I love these kind of lures. They're plugs. They give a lot of action. They don't skip out of the water. Number two, you need some monofilament line. 300 pound test so it doesn't break. Three, you're going to need some crimps that are big enough for monofilament, 300 pound test monofilament line. Four, you're going to need some eye protectors. Five, you're going to need a crimper. Six, you're going to need some rope. Seven, you're gonna need some bungee or something to give this thing some stretch. You can get creative here, man. Anything, really. We want to use those car straps to like, those block things with the metal hooks on the ends, but they kind of broke once when we had big tuna. So just get creative to put some elasticity in the system. Finally, you need a yo-yo or some piece of wood to wrap your line around. Uh, I made this personally, but you can also use one of those round plastic yo-yos. Finally, finally, you need some gloves to, 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 to haul in your line. And I like to use a harness so I don't fall overboard. Obviously it doesn't have a life jacket attached to it and it just chills out on the, uh, on the rail. When you're fishing, you often get a lot of blood in places. So uh, not having a life jacket on the harness makes it really easy to wash. But down here I have a couple things I wanted to go over for the swivels and the connectors so that it's a fail safe setup. So let's talk swivels for a second. I have gone through a lot of swivels. I've had a lot of swivels fail on me and I've concluded that the best swivel is what's called a corkscrew swivel. It has no moving parts uh, and it looks like this. That's it right here. It simply has a swivel and then a corkscrew on the end. That is opposed to a snap swivel which uh, opens and closes. These are gonna fail more often than not. These are basically foolproof. And if you look at my actual hand line, I have an even bigger corkscrew swivel on it. So the bigger the better. What was that? The bigger, the better. The bigger the swivel, the better. I've actually bought some of these things uh, all over the place, including the Cook Islands, Marquesas, Tahiti, uh, Panama. So you can buy some of these things along the way. There's people fishing everywhere. But if you want, there's also links in the description below so you can order them and have it ready before you leave port. You can also make your own lures. I collect a lot of corks, but that's, that's for another video. So stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up. If you like it, share it on Facebook. Just go fishing. Go, go fishing. Go. Hey,